B5 Render just released a new update, and in this video, I will break down the most impactful features. When opening up D5 Render, the first thing you'll notice is the new D5 launcher, which replaces the old web page. It now automatically minimizes to the system tray when opening a scene, as well as it keeps your workflow smooth while remaining very accessible. One of the new things is it integrates with D5 Render and also new features to come, D5 Lite and D5 Sync. But it also has future updates that will bring more tools and resources as well. That brings us to our first new feature within D5 2.11 which is the advanced brush tool. Previously in D5 Render, you've been able to use the scatter tool to select vegetation and then paint it onto your model. Now there have been some limitations to that where it's not as customizable for the areas that you can paint it unless you go back to your 3D model and adjust that. But with this new update in D5 Render, you have the ability using the advanced brush to select the same assets that you wanna paint for vegetation but instead of painting it to a surface, you have the flexibility to use a brush and adjust the radius and paint it to wherever you want in your project. And so as you see, it instantly populates after I've brushed over the area. And so within this tool, you have the flexibility to adjust each individual vegetation element, the scaling, you know, how often it is produced within that area, as well as the collision volume, which kind of dictates, you know, how close it is to other assets and how spread out it is. But if you don't like the current path that you've created, you don't have to delete it. You can go back and edit the path. So there were some areas where there was existing vegetation. So I went ahead and erased those areas and then I'll go back and repaint around that to repopulate the vegetation. And just like that, like, Within the snap of my fingers, it repopulates. In D5 Render, you've been able to place paths for characters, vehicles, and animals. But now, you can create a custom path for virtually any asset. And this is great when you're trying to create a repetitive element. Now for this demo, I'm going to use this fencing asset. And so right away, it only populates one poor fence. But it's going to get a lot better. You can increase the density to populate as many fences as you want along that path. Right now it's a little too dense, but you can adjust the slider to get exactly the right spacing that you want. And now let's say you're working with some topography that has a little bit of a slope. You can turn on the drop to ground slider and that allows the assets to drop all the way to the ground plane and it aligns with the slope and you're not having to manually adjust or have any assets hover. Within this custom path, you also have the ability to rotate, offset, and scale the elements to the sizing that you want. Now, none of those really apply to what I'm doing here with the fence, but as you can see, I did this really quickly. It's a lot faster than having to place each fence element individually. And what makes this 10 times better is you have the ability to save this as a preset so they can use it later on on other projects. Next up is one of my most anticipated features of this new D5 render update, which is the AI agent tool. Now this is an intelligent design assistant that helps you do things like smart planting by allowing you to enter your site location and preferences to generate a landscape, as well as turning that landscape into a plant schedule that you can easily export. And finally, it also includes a D5 bot, which is your go-to assistant for D5 related questions. Now this AI agent is probably the best tool out of all the rendering softwares for beginners because it allows you to talk to the D5 bot to learn the software without having to spend hours figuring it out on your own and watching tutorials. So for instance, I'll ask, how do I create a realistic rendering? And so it'll process for a little bit and then come back with some keys and we'll come back with some key steps to walk me through the best way to create a realistic rendering within D5 covering environmental setup, materials, lighting, landscape, and output. And so far it's getting really detailed 
for each of those five main elements on D5 Render's rendering. And from there, it also connects you with these live links to videos on the D5 Render YouTube channel. And so this AI agent is an excellent asset for those new to rendering or even just new to D5 Render. And if you wanna learn quick, you can use this AI agent. But now back to some amazing tools in regards to vegetation that'll save you hours. I mean, I'm serious. Once you see this, it, it'll blow your mind and make you think I've been wasting so much time placing individual plants. Natural perennial flower bed. So these element, these words that have a box or up here highlighted are the prompts that are interchangeable. And so you can change the location and it'll update the prompt, but you can also select when it mentions the color it gives you recommended colors that you can use. So these are the ones that the AI has been trained on. We'll change the yellow. You can also change uh, if it's sun drenched or the climate. And so we have the prompt where we want it. And so we'll just have enter and see what the AI can create for us. And so within probably 15 seconds, it created a full table that has a list of all the names of the plants the colors, the season, the light requirements, and the water requirements. And so if you end up sticking to whatever the AI agent generates, you can export this table as an Excel file. But now for the part that you've all been waiting for, the part that will save you so much time. Click on the auto scatter and then from there you can select the area that you want to add to the vegetation layer. So I'll click this open green space that's selected, click on create. And now I'll let AI within D5 generate the vegetation layout. Even though I sped everything up just for the sake of time, that roughly took maybe 30 seconds to a minute to place all of this vegetation. Now, as I kind of scan around and look at what D5 has created in terms of this vegetation. Just imagine how long this would have taken you to create on your own, placing each individual element or even using some of D5's existing vegetation tools. Nothing would have allowed you to create something this quickly. My D5 is now lagging a little bit, understandably, but still this is insane and if you go down to the options, it's easily turned on and off as an entire layer. So you're not having to hide each individual floral element on its own. The next feature is the AI material snap tool, which can be found in the assets under material, which allows you to upload an image to generate a PBR material. As you can see on the screen, you can use a perspective image and you don't have to rely on a 2D texture to generate a material within D5 Render. This allows you the ability to select any material from a given image that you want to import. So we'll click on the floor, turn on the displacement map and generate. And within seconds, it'll generate a PBR material like this that you can use within D5. It also produces a list of recommended materials that are somewhat similar to the one that was created if you want some alternatives. If you do like the material that was generated, you can add it to local to be used on future projects. This is just basically saving it permanently on your local computer. But if you wanna apply the material, all you have to do is click on the eyedropper and then select the area that you wanna place. Then is maybe adjust the UV map and the scale. And just like that, we've created an interior floor material using a perspective image. Now let's do the same thing, but on the exterior. So we kind of have this plain white, boring facade, but if we go back to the AI material snap, I'll import a better image. I like this facade in the image, so I'll use rectangular selection feature this time. Go in and select the material. We'll do that, same thing, and then generate. Okay, I created the material. I'll go ahead and apply that. Applied it a little bit small, 
So we'll just increase the UV a little bit. And just like that, you have a newly generated PBR material that you can use on all your projects. Some more features that have been added within this, the new D5 version are these orthographic views using the parallel camera view, which allows you to align your views with a click of a button, as well as create floor plans within minutes. So I went to the top view to give the base for my floor plans, but you'll have to go to preferences first and make sure you go to widgets and turn on your section tool to in order to execute these floor plans. You'll click on section plane. And right now, once you place it, it's a little bit dark, but there's a few more settings we have to go in order to get what we want. So I'll raise up the section cube. I'll raise up the section plane so that it's actually cutting through the house and then you turn on the fill and then affected by light is what's gonna give it the most realism because right now before that it was cutting through the building and it wasn't letting any light through. But now you can adjust the sky settings and it'll perfectly show up on this floor plan. Now I just wanna make sure I get the shadows and the lighting just how I like it. And then from there you can go back and you can start to adjust the fill color this eliminates the need to have to go through multiple softwares for post-production. And you can do mostly all of this within D5 Render. I would also like to quickly mention that the real-time path tracing has now moved from alpha to official release status in this latest version. Now you no longer have to go into preferences and turn on the path tracing setting within D5. It should automatically be a part of the rendering system. There's a lot to be excited about in this latest D5 render update, but let's recap the five most important tools that we covered today. The advanced brush tool, the custom path tool, the show orthographic view and align by selection, the D5 agent and the AI PBR material snap tools. Now, one of the things that I've really been impressed by in D5 render is their commitment to continually improving their AI features and finding ways and workflows that have been slow in the past and using AI to optimize and speed up the design process within the rendering software. And as you can tell with the D5 agent and how you're able to populate a vegetation landscape within minutes, that personally is the thing I'm the most excited about because of how much time that will save me, especially when I'm doing larger scale projects where there's gonna be a lot more landscape architecture in the design. But let me know in the comments below which features you're the most excited about or if there's any features that you want D5 to include in the future. Thank you guys for watching and welcome to the grind.